Davis stands on the issue, but he had a very brief response to it yesterday, saying, quote, I have no comment. Ask the NFL. They have all the answers. Huh. Shannon, what do you make of this? <laughs> Mark Davis said, I don't know what y'all looking at me for. They sent me 10 emails. They got 650,000 more of them, Skip. Yeah. So, hey, ask them. They have all the answers. Mark Davis is not like his father because the process of when Jack Del Real was still coach, he was already talking to, to uh, John Gruden, Coach Gruden. Mm -hmm. And when he got hired, he didn't go through the process of what they said the, the Fritz Pollard Alliance and the Rooney Rule mm -hmm. says, you will interview minorities yep. and give them a fair opportunity to get the job. Yep. He, Mark Davis is nothing like his father. Because his father was the first to hire African-American coach in the modern era. He was the first to hire a Latino coach, Tom Flores. He in was the, the first to win a Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. As a matter of fact, he went two. Mm -hmm. And he was the first to put a woman in a position of authority. CEO, Amy, Amy Trask. Trask uh, wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm. Before even we thought about women even being in this position, yep. he had one. Yep. So Mark Davis is not like his father. Now, he have, might have his dad's last name. He might wear, try to wear white like his dad would wear. But that's, what, that's the only similarities that they have. Because his dad was really a, really a pioneer, a really forward thinker. He really, who, it, oh, they got guys down there, black HBCUs, that can help me win. He said, just win, baby. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what you look like, your color. I don't care about anything. I just want to win. That is correct. That's how his father thought. So for me, Skip, I, I, what Mark Davis had really hoped, he had all this information that the NFL in it, some, well, the Wall Street Journal and the you know, Washington Post or New York no, Times, New York whatever, Times. Yeah. Times, they ended up leaking the rest of it. He had everything that they ended up leaking on Monday. He had that on Friday. He was hoping that it blow over. He was hoping that nothing else came out. The only thing that would come out is talking about D. Smith's lips. And he was going to be cool. Well, you know, that was very insensitive. I talked to John. He understand he made a mistake. But when this other thing started coming out and he started talking about the commissioner and he started saying these other things, this was the, the ground swell, the, the tsunami, it could not be stopped. Tsunami. So he had no choice. He's like, John, I'm going to do, do the grace. I don't want to be the one to fire you, but I'm going to need you to step down. And, 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 grew, and he knew. That, Skip, remember I told you I came here on Monday. He said, Skip, I said, Skip, he tried to get in front of this. He said, I might have said some other things as well. <laughs> Oh, you dry snitching on yourself? Ain't nobody asking you what. They were talking about the comments that you made. You telling us now there may be some more comments because he already knew. He knew what was coming. Yep. And so, Skip, they were like, Mark, we need you to go ahead and handle this. But since you won't do it on Friday, we're going to give somebody else some more information and let it all come out. And now everybody knows, like, well, hold on. You had this information on Friday, and you still didn't do anything with it? Mm -hmm. So Mark Davis is, like, pushing it back. Hey, the NFL, they have all the answers. They got another 650,000 emails that I don't know anything about. Ask them. Mm. Mark Davis said, I'm, hey, my hands clean. Hey, I'm just the owner. I did what I felt I had to do. No, you did what you were forced to do. Because given the choice, if you would have kept, kept, if the only thing that came out, Skip, was the D. Smith, Mm -hmm. John Gruden is still coaching the Vegas Raiders. Yep. It wasn't until this, this, the, the second and third part. The avalanche. Yep. So, back in the day, I had the honor and the privilege of getting to know the father, Al Davis, the late great. He had his flaws. He was constantly at <laughs> war with the National Football League. And he believed to his dying day that he got tuck ruled. Yeah. In Foxborough, which launched the New England dynasty and ended the Raiders' run toward a Super Bowl, I believe they would have won. Mm -hmm. And he believed that the commissioner himself got involved that night from New York right. to say, no, get him. Mm -hmm. Do him in. Right. right here, right now. The game would have been over, mm -hmm. and you know the rest of the right. story. That was Commissioner Tagliabue then. It was Tagliabue. That, that, was, that was Commissioner Goodell. Al pulled me aside the first day of training camp. It was evening, and he pulled me aside, and we went over and sat in, in the then-empty weight area where they lifted the mm -hmm. weights outside, and, and he just filled my ear with what he thought of Tagliabue in that night. But to all your points, he was a revolutionary progressive in this league. You just look at everything. It's just one thing after another. Right. When nobody was even thinking, Skip, no other owner was even thinking about that. No. Black, Latino, female. Boom, boom, boom. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. And now the son has only one thing in common with the father. 
he's he's at war with the league for the wrong reason. Right. You, you can just see when, when he had his chance to comment to ESPN, he just blew it off in three lines. I have no comment. Ask the NFL. They have all the answers. War has been declared. Mm -hmm. Yet you're at war trying to defend a man who is indefensible. Correct. Right. But that's what he's saying. They got me. Right. Ask them. It's it's their doing. Right. They made an example of him. Well, he deserved to be made an example of. I, I get it. Right. Are there others who could? Yeah, right. We get it. We yeah. got it. We, we, you, he he's finally held held accountable for his actions. Okay. Now to your other point about the Rooney Rule. Our man Jarrett Bell in today's USA Today mm -hmm. wrote a scathingly great piece about what Mark Davis did not do when he hired John Gruden. And in fairness, Mark had made the point it had been like a seven-year quest to talk John into taking the Raiders right. job, which he had held under the father long ago, as mm -hmm. you recall. Right. He was the Tuck Rule victim that Correct. night. And yet he felt, John fell completely apart with the father, treated the father with little to no respect. Right. I once witnessed a screaming match between the two of them. And John, a very young coach, was so full of himself that Al finally said, I can't take this anymore. Right. And he traded him to Tampa, fatefully. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And it was for, a, it was two firsts two and first two seconds. That, yeah. and, and, and like and um, $8 million. $8 million. <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. <laughs> and it worked. One year, but, but John took... Tony Dungy's team uh -huh. and talent. Right. And Rich McKay had been the architect right. of right. that. And he took it over the, the, the energy that mm -hmm. he could generate, took it over the top. So I give you that. Mm -hmm. But my point is, when it came full circle back to the sun, the sun blatantly ignored the Rooney rule. In fact, he, he made a mockery of the Rooney rule because he had already agreed in principle with John Gruden and it became public in principle. And then all of a sudden he tells his then black GM, Reggie McKenzie. Right. I don't know if you ever crossed Reggie's mm. path a little bit, I, but okay. I think I, I played, he was with the uh, Washington football he team. He was, he was. But so, so he's still the GM, but only he's, he's it, about to be not the GM. Right. But he forces him to go interview two minority candidates who at the time was the USC offensive coordinator, T. Martin, and then the, the, the current Raiders at that point, tight ends coach, Bobby Johnson. Well, it's just a joke. Right. And and Jarrett Bell was outraged, and our friend John Wooten, who was then running the Fritz Pollard Alliance that oversees the Rooney Rule, was that I've known John for like 40 years, right. and I have never seen him more outraged right. than what Mark Davis did to the Rooney Rule or, or didn't do with the Rooney Rule. And John wanted retribution, and Jarrett wrote about it, and I don't know if you remember, we talked about it, mm -hmm. this is back in 2018 mm -hmm. when he hired Gruden, that there should be retribution. There right. should be a penalty. And Jared Bell wrote that it should be just like Deflate Gate, where you, you have to sacrifice your first round pick right. and one million in mm -hmm. fines because it's if of that magnitude. It, you, you can't set a new example of, well, he, he just ignored it, right? Right. right. Because it's, it's going to set back the minority hiring process. Right. 10 years. And plus, Skip, he was already undermining the coach that he had because you're courting a coach when you already have one employee. That is correct. So you've already, you already, under, you, you, little do you know that you're undermining the staff that you have already because you're out there courting. So what do you think this is going to lead to? A bit, I, I'm sure you, you, you hear rumblings. Could John Gruden be coming back? You know, Raiders might be interested. But Why? I mean, it's okay. easy, Skip. Everybody, man, he'll make a great coach. You call him plays. Skip, it's one thing to call plays. It's another thing to lead men. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't think, Skip, and I told you, I said, Skip, I don't think it's going to work. I think the time has passed him by. Yeah, I, I did think it was going to work. He's too archaic. Yeah. He's too set in his ways. Well, he's Belichickian. <laughs> yes. If he can get away with it, he needs the team to rise up. He needed Derek Carr to be his buffer in the locker room and to play at a Brady-esque level. And we're going to see how long the Belichickian mm -hmm. way works when you're not winning. I agree. That way works when you're winning because none of the other Belichickian disciples yep. have been able to have that success. They try to come at Joe Judge with that iron fist and this guy with the iron fist. It's not and, working anywhere. And when you don't win, nope. they look at you, man, get out of my face. Okay, so what's the most painful irony about what Mark Davis did to mock the Rooney rule? He hired a racist coach, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. At least one who demonstrated a, very, a racist a, tendency. Yes, very, a very, and spoke openly, very insensitive. 
and you're gonna get it back. Think about it, Skip. How how hard it must be. You know, be people say, you know, I don't get an opportunity to live my true self. You know, when they 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 reveal that they've been living a double life, yep. and it was very very hard to hide this. Imagine what it's like to have these kind of thoughts in your mind, and you got to get up there in front of men. Seventy percent of them, you got to get up between in front of fifty through. Good. Now they got 15, 16. So about seventy men every day. Every day. And, and pretend like, guys, we won one, and you know, I love you like you, we brothers. Yep. Think about how hard that gotta be. And you can't slip up mm -mm. because you can't slip up in front of the guys. If, if anything would have, guys pick up on the instant, like, hold on, coach, what's up with that? And mm -hmm. I don't see in college, I don't know how it is because it's been so long since I've been in college, but in the NFL, players will fight a coach. Absolutely. I've seen it. Yep. So you can't talk to him. He skipped. That's a grown man. You can't mm -hmm. talk to him sideways. No. You can't disrespect him because he gonna check you. He could be a tyrant, but nobody ever accused him of being a racist tyrant. Right. right? That's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. You, you can say, oh, he run Iron Fist, and we proud all these practices, and we got all these meetings. Oh, you said what? Excuse me. Okay, so this leads back to the question I told you. I was around him a number of times at ESPN, and obviously I never saw a hint of any of the bigotry. Right. But he's he's a shrewd operator. Right. He's not going to do that. What, right. what do we hear from Mike Tirico, who worked right. for...